It's my plea that the message of the Quran be widely spread. May the flag of Islam become more elevated than the rest. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen. Amma ba'd. فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله أو بلاود نبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم هسد that a person who sends one time durood or salutation or salawat upon me, Allah Azzawajal sends ten mercies upon him. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salatan wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah. Dearest Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, once again we welcome you into this beautiful silsila of Madani channel, Blessings of Quran. Inshallah Azawajal, in this silsila we will discuss the ayat number 49 of Surah Al-Baqarah, in which Allah Azawajal says, وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ Translation from Kanzul Iman and recall when we rescued you from Pharaoh's people who subjected you to cruel oppression, slaying your sons and keeping your women alive. And therein was a great trial from your Lord. This was the literal translation of this very verse which I have recited. As usual, inshallah, we will do the tafsir of the ayat word by word and then we will give the summary of the tafsir or the commentary of the ayat and inshallah azawajal we will learn many madani pulse from this discussion inshallah the word is is used and normally after that uzkur is always hidden which means remember because Bani Israel they were aware of history therefore an incident which took place in the past is being reminded to them when normally the word is is used for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa an incident of past is being reminded. That is because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been granted the knowledge of unseen. So that past incident is in his knowledge and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends wahi to remind him. Najjainakum. This word is derived from Najwan, which means to separate or to be at a high place. Now if a person, he separates himself from any mischief, he runs away. He is safeguarded from that fitna, from that mischief. Therefore, it is called Nijat or salvation. And there are many words which are derived from this root word Najwan. 
And in all the meanings, if you ponder upon, you will find that the meaning of separation is there. Istinja, for example, is derived from this word Najwan. Because Istinja is performed in separation. Therefore, it is called Istinja and the meaning of separation is there. And the word Munajat is also derived from this word Najwan. Because that is a dua which is done in seclusion, in separation. And also Mashwara is called Najwa. Because Mashwara, this is a private advice that is also given in separation. So, what is being said here, Najjainakum, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala separated you from the people of Fir'aun, from the people of Pharaoh, which means He rescued you. He provided you salvation from that difficulty. Even though this incident happened or took place at the time of the forefathers of Bani Israel. But they are being reminded as that this favor was done about you. It is because if their forefathers were not protected and they were not rescued, then present days Israelis would not have been there because they are the children of their forefathers. Therefore, the ihsan or the favor which is done upon their forefathers, it is equal to the favor which is being done upon them. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued you from Pharaoh's people. Then the word comes, min ali fir'auna. Al is derived from the word Ahal. But in usage, these two words are used separately. Now there is a clear difference in the use of these two words. Ahal can be related to anything. For example, we say ahl e bayt or we say ahl -e city ahl -e shahir or ahl -e ilm etc. And Al is normally related to someone, some personality who is significant. And his significance could be from the worldly point of view or from the dini point of view. For example, we say al -e Imran, we say al -e Nabi, and we say al -e Fir'aun. Those who live in the house are also called Al. For example, wife, children, servants, etc. And those who are born in the house, for example, children, are also called Al. And your followers, devotees, are also called Al. And here the third meaning is taken. That is, that the soldiers or those who followed Fir'aun, those who were devotees to Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued you from them. Because Fir'aun himself did not have any children and no harm reached to Bani Israel from the wife of Fir'aun, which was Hazrat Asiya radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was a believer and a pious lady. So the meaning of the verse is that the army of Fir'aun or the police of Fir'aun or the servants of Fir'aun who were there to serve Fir'aun and take orders from Fir'aun, 
and do things and perform things as Fir'aun desired and wanted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued you from them. Fir'aun is a title for king in Egypt. In Misri or in Egyptian language at that time, any person who was given the kingdom or became a king, he was called Fir'aun. As in Arabic, we say Sultan to the king, or in Persian, we say Badshah, or in Hindi, we say Raja, or in English, we say King. So every king who was there at that time, he was being called Fir'aun. And this particular Fir'aun, which was at the time of Hazrat Musa, his name was Walid bin Mas'ab. And he was a very handsome person. Therefore, he was called Qabus. And the meaning of Qabus in that language means a shining spark. Because he looked very handsome, very beautiful. That's why they used to call him Qabus. And because he became king of Egypt, and for that reason he was called Fir'aun. He was a very cruel person, very harsh person, and he was an oppressor. And inshallah, as we move further with our discussion, we will discuss more about this particular Fir'aun. And the Fir'aun at the time of Hazrat Yusuf salam was not the same Fir'aun, he was another person. So many people think that that is the same Fir'aun. This is not true. In fact, the Fir'aun at the time of Hazrat Yusuf salam, his name was Rayyan ibn Walid. And there is a distance of 400 years in time between Hazrat Musa salam, and between Hazrat Yusuf salam. Yasumunakum. This word is derived from sumun, which means to find or to search. That is the reason that a price of something in the marketplace is also called sumun, because we go to the marketplace to search something because of our requirement or because of our need. And here, this word is in the meaning of delivering or to letting you taste. Because Kiptis or the people of Fir'aun, they used to search Israelis or people of Bani Israel. And then they used to punish them, hurt them or harm them. Su al azabi The meaning of word su is evil or bad or very hard, cruel. This would mean that that the people of Fir'aun they used to punish you harshly and in a very bad way. The oppression of Fir'aun and his people were countless upon Bani Israel. They used to take their children as their slaves. Their women were domestic workers or maids at their homes. And they used to take the young people of Bani Israel for hard works or work in the farms, etc. And the young men of Bani Israel, they used to carry stones for them, break stones for them in order to make bricks. So Fir'aun and his people can build their homes. And they used to force them to work so much 
that their necks and their backs would get injured. They used to take tax from poor people and everybody must pay tax every day before the sunset. And if someone did not give tax for one day, they will tighten up their arms around their neck and keep them in that misery and in that difficulty for the whole month. And the old people of Bani Israel, they were kept on very mean works, for example, to clean the toilets and to broom in the streets or in the places where the Kiptis or the people of Fir'aun would get together and sit. And the old ladies of Bani Israel, they used to make thread from cotton and then manufacture clothes for them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ and this is now further detail of the difficulties which were being imposed upon Bani Israel from the side of people of Fir'aun. That there were so many difficulties and with that the most hurting, the most touching, the most unbearable Taklif or difficulty or sorrow which was being put upon you, O Bani Israel, and that was Yudabihuna Abna Akum. They used to kill your sons, they would slaughter your sons. And this was very difficult. Because when the sons are being slaughtered, their progeny their families will come to an end. And women are there and they will not have men to marry or to find partners. And this would lead to many other difficulties, also issues of chastity and honor and etc. And because it is very hurtful when a small son is being slaughtered in front of the mother. Mother brings the child into this dunya with many difficulties and she has many hopes that my son will grow up one day and he will look after me or he'll get married and I will play with my grandchildren and I'll enjoy my life, etc., etc. And also, it is natural that people like their male children more than female children. Because male children are normally the support of the family. And family runs, the name of the family runs from the male children, not from the female children. Female will go and get married in another family and she will carry the children of another family. Had they killed sons and daughters, that would have been a different issue. But what they used to do, yastahyuna nisaakum. They would leave your women alive. Keep in mind that in Quran Kareem, the word abna is used for the boys. But for the girls, word Nisa is used, not Banat. But the correct word, as we understand, is Banat for the young girls, not Nisa. So what is the reason? The reason is that because they're leaving these young girls alive, and they will grow up and they will become women. And when they become women, then they need to get married. They need to have husbands. And then it is difficult for parents to keep them. They become burden. So now their sons are being killed. 
they are not there anymore men are not there so this was a very difficult punishment very painful punishment and a cruel oppression which was being exercised upon bani israel and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa fi zalikum in all these difficulties bala um mir rabbikum azim there is a bala bala means here a test an exam a trial and sometimes imtihan or test is done by difficulties and sometimes it is being done with favors so both meaning could be correct here that you are being tested because of those difficulties or the present days bani israel you are being tested because of the favor of allah subhanahu wa taala that he rescued you from the people of firaun so the summary of the explanation or the tafsir of this ayat is that o people of bani israel you remember the difficulties of firaun he used to put up every day something new which would hurt you and cause disturbance in your life and he caught you in so many different types of punishments and sorrows he used to kill your sons and leave your daughters alive and in this there was a huge difficulty for you and a huge trouble for you your nasl your qaum your nation was reducing and there was possibility that your daughters would be used for something else and it was difficult to see that your sons are being killed in front of your eyes to see the son is being killed in the lap of the mother the pain is unbearable so all these difficulties are being counted one by one and then allah subhanahu wa taala tells them about the favor that through musa alaihi salam allah subhanahu wa taala rescued you he gave you salvation from that difficulty how big favor is this how big favor this ihsan is and such a great bounty of allah azza wa jal this ni'mat is that he set you free from the difficulties of firaun so now with all this you should be doing the right thing and the right thing is that you should believe in the last prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam also keep in mind that bani israel after they were rescued from firaun they used to celebrate that day and they used to remember that day and that was the day of ashura 10th of muharram and they used to fast on that day in the beginning of islam the fasting on the 10th of muharram was fard upon muslims and also keep in mind that a practice of bani israel a celebration a festival which they used to have islam did not condemn that islam did not stop that so this tells you very well that celebrations are not prohibited in islam as long as they are being done according to the rules and regulations of sharia therefore to celebrate the birthday of your children is allowed in islam and to celebrate 
your wedding days is also allowed in Islam to celebrate the Urs Mubarak of Buzurgani Deen is also allowed in Islam and to celebrate the Mauludun Nabi or the Milat of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also allowed in Islam. Now let's talk about Bani Israel, Fir'aun and Hazrat Musa Alayhi Salaam. After Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam, till Hazrat Yaqub Alayhi Salaam, all the children or the progeny of Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam, they stayed in Canaan. And then the brothers of Hazrat Yusuf Alayhi Salaam became jealous of him. And that became the reason for Hazrat Yusuf Alayhi Salaam to go to Egypt. He was taken as a slave and he was sold there. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him glory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him honor. And he became the king of Egypt. And then all the children of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam moved to Egypt. And there were so many. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave barakah in the progeny of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. And they became the powerful people, the elite people of that country. And when there was a drought, then each and every person from the children of Yaqub alayhi salam, they moved to Egypt. And they became in large number. As I said earlier, that Allah gave barakah in their awlad, in the progeny, that they started growing and they became very large number. In this time, Israelis were the prominent people of Egypt. And the Fir'aun of Yusuf alayhi salam, he died. And then there was disorder in Egypt. Walid bin Mas'ab, who is the Fir'aun of the time of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he was a poor man from Asfahan and he used to sell perfume. When he was indebted, he had to pay money to a lot of people. He ran away from Asfahan and he reached to Syria. But there too he did not find any mean of earning. And then in order to find a job or earning, he came to Egypt. And he saw that there was a village and in that village there are watermelons in large quantity. Or there are sweet melons in large quantity. So he decided, let me buy some and I will take to the city and I'll sell them there and I'll make profit. So he bought many watermelons or sweet melons from the village and started moving towards the city. But he saw that on the road at many places there are people who are standing and they take tax. They claim that we are appointed by the government. So he started giving watermelons as tax. Until the time he reached city, he was left with one watermelon. He was a sharp person. He decided or he understood that there is no law and order in this country. Anybody can, you know, say to the people that I'm appointed by government and start taking tax. So he decided to sit in the graveyard. And when people die, they bring the dead body to bury in the graveyard. He will say that, well, give me five dirhams because I'm appointed by the government to collect tax. So that way he collected lots of money. And then a person 
from the royal family he passed away and when they came to bury him he asked for money and they knew that this person is not appointed to do that work so they arrested him and he was taken to the king the king asked him why do you do that he said actually i used this as a scheme to get to you or to reach to you in fact when i came into your country i realized that there is no law and order there is no discipline people are doing whatever they want to do so i sat in graveyard for so many months and i collected so much money and he kept all that money in front of the king he said my purpose was not to make money my purpose was to reach to you and that exercise became an excuse and i'm here in front of you so please you take the money because this is the tax money and this belongs to you this belongs to your kingdom but i would like to tell you that if you give me some responsibilities in your government i'll put your system right so at the first stage the king of that time or the pharaoh of that time he gave him some responsibilities some ordinary responsibilities and he worked very hard and he proved himself that he is a good worker and he is a good planner then slowly he became the general of the army of pharaoh of that time or he became the commander in chief of the army and he proved himself through his hard work that he is powerful man he makes firm decisions and he can bring law and order back in the society and when that king passed away so everybody decided to appoint walid as king of egypt so he sat on his throne and as soon as he sat on his throne and he tasted the power he immediately announced that everyone must prostrate to him and make sajda to him the first person who made sajda to pharaoh his name was haman and he was the minister of pharaoh and then he sent orders to other cities to other places that they all must come and prostrate to pharaoh and those who were far and they were unable to reach they were ordered to make idols on the name of pharaoh and they must worship and make ibadat for those idols so slowly people of that time they started worshiping idols but bani israel because they from the children of anbiya and the teachings of anbiya alaihim salam was still fresh amongst them they refused to make sajda to pharaoh and they said we cannot worship you you are just an ordinary man only allah alone can be worshiped pharaoh got very angry on the response of bani israel and he decided to punish them and what was his method of punishing them that he boiled olive oil in big pots and added sulfur with that to give the enhancement to the heat and then people of bani israel were being put in those pots and they were being burnt and many of them were killed like that and they were burnt like that but they were still firm and they said no we will not worship you we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and when kibtis the people of pharaoh they realized that many of the people of bani israel are going to be killed 
then how would we have servants and how would we have people who would serve us and do our work and our things. So they advised to Fir'aun that stop killing them. Then Fir'aun saw a dream that there was a huge snake which came out from the streets or from the area of Bani Israel and that snake has taken Fir'aun out of his throne, put him on the ground and he got very worried about it and he went to the people who could do the interpretations of dream and they said that there will be a child born in Bani Israel and he will be cause of your destruction. And then Fir'aun ordered that any child that is born in Bani Israel must be killed. Or if woman is pregnant, her pregnancy must be terminated. And many thousand, some Mufassirin or commentators have said that, up to 70,000 children were killed or the pregnancy were terminated. And that was to avoid that fear and that was not allowing that child to come into this dunya who was the cause of destruction of Fir'aun. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own plans. And then people complain that, O oh Fir'aun, if you're killing all the sons and the babies, male babies of Bani Israel. We'll, we will have no people to serve us and to work for us. So then Firaun decided that one year the children would not be killed and in the other year children would be killed. So this was the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in the year in which the children are not being killed, Hazrat Harun was born. And in the year that children must be killed, Hazrat Musa was born. So, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, we will continue our discussion on this topic. And in the next episode and in the next silsila, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, we will discuss the birth of Hazrat Musa and his growing up in the house of Fir'aun and how. He destroyed Fir'aun, his power and his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to learn ilm deen and understand Qur'an and hadith. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's my plea that the message of the Qur'an be widely spread. May the flag of Islam become more